Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to do something a tiny bit different. I'm going to show how the Disobey 2018 badge puzzle actually worked. And here we can see the basic block diagram for the game. This game was played by having different kinds of badges that would you would then collect the cereals from one batch to another. You'd connect the batches and they would do a key exchange and it would create a new key. Once you've done enough key exchanges, you would then have a key which would let you access a box. And the badges also contained QR codes of several different types. And those QR codes would let you access packages that are on the machines that were on the badge game network and each of the machines would have different kinds of vulnerabilities that you could access and with that you could hop from machine to machine and then you could open the packages inside and each machine would contain a flag and each package would contain a flag and once you've opened all of the packages you then have a big or part RAR file and from there you could get the final flag and then you could win. Well, this is the simplified version of how the thing works. Here is the not so simplified version. And let's try to explain how this works. The best part about this is that this is not actually fully documented because I ran out of time and since I was the only one building this uh, I had some paper versions which I will so show if I can find them but the problem is that I'm currently I have lost them but if I'll find them I'll show them here but most of the information is here so once people would, would gather the required amount of exchanges, they would be able to access the gateway. And with the gateway, they could access the rest of the network. But if they'd scan the network, they'd find that, wait a minute, this machine is actually running VNC. And you could access the HR machine with the VNC which would then allow you to access other machines because of the, the keys that you could get out of the HR machine. Now, this was a huge mistake. Turns out that the VNC would not kick the sessions when someone else would try to log in, which meant that two players managed to completely hog the HR machine for like eight hours and prevented other people from doing stuff. In any case, once they'd managed to download stuff from there, they would be able to open packages. And uh, there was a, for example, you'd get the package from HR machine, and you'd then use a QR code from one of the badges, and you could open the first package, you get a flag, and you'd get a new package. And let's see if I can pull one of the packages here. So you would essentially get a package like this and then you'd have a flag. And despite me putting all of this information that says in three different languages that, you know, this does not contain any hints of any sort, uh, people would still try to find hints in the flag files. And once you have this, you can then try to open it and it would prompt you for a password. And you had four different kinds, one for each of the, the boxes. And for those who are interested, here are the QR codes. And once you'd gotten 
through that, you will get the next one. But I'll show the, the picture of bishop here. And in this case, bishop's serial number was encoded with semaphore flags. And they were simplified, as you can see. But they contained the information for the bishop's serial number so that you can open the next package. Once you've got that package open, you'd be presented with a audio file. And if you listen to said audio file, you'd n find nothing particularly interesting. But if you looked at the audio file in a spectrogram, you would be able to find Braille written in it. And by decoding the Braille, you'd find your answer to the next package. And as you can see, Botimac Boatface was one of those things that was around that time. So that was then put into the file servers package. And I used Zpack to package the files because that's a rather unknown format. And with that format, I could throw people off a bit. Also, I thought. And once you manage to get that open, uh, also there's, there's this alternatively picture contains Mario from Metropolis, but that was never, that was a idea that I had, but then I just scrapped that one and used the Bowdy Mac Bowface. Once you got that open, you can then get a, a new package that contains a picture of Voyager's Golden Record that has an embedded zip file, which then contains the actual puzzle and it's a, so, a picture of a social rover and it asks what what essentially is the, the CPU used in that rover. The thing is that when you unpack the packages you get a RAR file out of them and a hint file which meant that you could with, when you open this one you would get the RAR file and you get the hint file and if you didn't look at what the picture actually contains in it, you would not be able to open it. Because the picture itself was just a red herring. And I also, since no one managed to open this one during 2018, I just took and recycled it. And when we go to the next one, we have the dev SRV. And... I think this was running one of the turnkey Linux, as, as well as the wiki was running a turnkey Linux server. And turns out that that particular version wasn't actually susceptible to most things, unlike the previous ones from turnkey Linux. So people didn't actually manage, to, I, thought, I don't think too many people managed to crack this one. But in any case, once you got this open, and you used the QR code to get the first package, you would get a text and this text corresponds with the cell phone keyboard or the old touch tone keyboard and by pressing these keys a certain amount of times you would get the correct answer which is 21 which happens to be a name of a domestic work robot in Japan and once you got that open you then got a SSTV audio that would decode a picture of a Martian landscape with Pathfinder and it would have a QR code on top of it and the QR code would open the, the last package here and I'll show you a picture of what SSTV decoded picture actually looks like then we get to the last box which is the wiki box and the v if I remember correctly, uh, you could access the wiki box from the HR machine directly. So once you could access to this, you could then access this. And the wiki had documentation on how you would make new uh, users for this corporation. These are all one corporation's boxes. So like you, you breach the HR machine, you can then access the wiki, which then lets you access the other boxes. Because... Uh, as everyone knows, when you give a new user their user account and their password and tell them to change the password, they're not going to change the password, 
which is exactly how you would get into this. And these weren't so that that these contained other flaws, which I can't remember anymore, and I can't even check them because the 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 machine that handled those boxes decided to break during the event which required me to reboot the entire thing which then for some reason turned off the remote access to the virtualization system which then meant that i had to do everything by hand from command line which is not something that i've done with proxmox too much uh, which meant that i managed to turn the machine into uh, essentially a box that worked but you could not do anything with it it would not properly work in any network other than the the game network so once i rebooted it everything would work but i could not touch anything i could not change any settings and i couldn't couldn't access the the uh, remote consoles so essentially thankfully the automation that i made before so that it would start the machines in a certain order uh, so that everything would work that worked perfectly but uh, i couldn't make any changes also, it, it, would, it also meant that if someone managed to break one of the machines, I wouldn't have been able to fix them. Like, they had snapshotting going, but since I didn't have access to restore the snapshots, if someone managed to break the machines, then I wouldn't have been able to restore them. In any case, let's get to the next one, which is a picture with some binary signaling, which then gives you... John Connor's computer, but that's encoded in ROT6, and you get Atari's portfolio out of it, which you would know if you'd never seen the Terminator movies. And then we have a essentially number stations, spoken Russian. So there were numbers that were spoken in Russian, and that would give you a uh, key or rather it would give you a text and with the polybius square you could translate it to johnny five is alive and if you know what johnny five is then great if you don't johnny five is a robot in a 1980s film that gains sentience by getting zapped with the lightning and once you've got gotten all of those you would get all of the four parts of the last piece and that would just be a, a four part RAR file and you could decode it and then we would get the final flag. Sadly no one was able to actually get the final flag and we then just gave the prize to the people who had the most points. And oh yeah that's the, the, the thing about the gateway was that that the gateway had the username for the gateway was, if I remember correctly, tattoo, uh, not Tatooine, but that, that Hoth, Hoth, the ice planet. Because if you look at our badges, which I'll show here, you can see that that is that robot. And it turns out that the younger audience in our event didn't actually recognize this robot because those movies are so old, which just made me feel old. But yeah, if you have any questions or comments about this particular puzzle, feel free to drop them in the comments, and I'll try to respond to them. Yeah, this has been a little bit of a different video, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.